What's up, Liron here. Thank you for joining me in another video. Today we're gonna address a very important topic that I get asked about all the time and that is how do I choose the colors I'm using in my paintings, okay? So before we begin, here's a painting I did yesterday uh, on location outside here in the street. Um, uh, I'm very pleased with the result and there's a certain color selection, there's a certain logic to the colors uh, that I used here. So I'm gonna divide uh, the, the lesson into two parts, okay? So the first one, we're gonna talk about macro. How do I even choose the colors that I like to use, that I enjoy using, the different combinations? Because the way my approach works is I go into the painting knowing what colors I'll be using and usually I minimize it to three, maybe sometimes two and sometimes four or five. Okay, so how do I even choose those combinations? How do I know what works in that regard? And then the second part is in the painting process, how do I know when to use each color? And that's something that I'm asked about a lot as well because you know my style isn't always realistic, it's more impressionistic and I like to take a lot of liberty with the colors I'm using. So. Uh, I really make use of my artistic license in that regard. Uh, and so a lot of people wonder, how do I know to put the yellow here, to put the red there? And it's a really good question. So what we're gonna do, first part, I'm gonna talk a bit about how I choose what colors to use. Second part, I'm gonna demonstrate exactly how I choose real time the color that I'll be using, okay? It's gonna be a real time pool demo that I think you're really in, gonna enjoy. So. Let's begin with the first part, and that is how do I even choose the colors I will paint with? Now, there's a very simple answer to that. You have to experiment, you have to test it out, see what colors you enjoy combining together. Okay, that's one major part of it. Now, the second part would be, I would say, tried and true. So there are certain combinations that work well. Now, me, after experiencing with many, many different combinations, I came to, uh, to create several groups of paints that work well for me. Uh, when used together. So I'm gonna show you one of them because I use it very often and that is the uh, phthalo blue or some kind of a cool blue. Uh, alizarin crimson, uh, quinacridone rose, kind of similar, uh, a cool red. And then finally a neutral or uh, a warm. I like sometimes the slightly biased towards the warm yellow. Okay, so this is a combination that works really well for me. And you can see here two are Daniel Smith, one are Alizarin Crimson, I don't, uh, one is, sorry, SAA. I don't care about the brand at all, I'm more into the paint itself. So this will be a uh, kind of a standard combination. Usually you'll see this one replaced by a lemony yellow, so you have this um, cyan yellow magenta combination. Uh, there are some differences, but mostly this is the one I found that works really well for me. Now let me show you another one that's more of a classic combination that works really well and that is uh, French ultramarine and then some kind of a, a an ochre yellow so in that case that's uh, raw sienna that that is very similar to yellow ochre uh, visually okay uh, but it has some more better uh, properties it's more transparent I love it better and then burnt sienna so these work really well together and it's a very well-known uh, uh, combination uh, the Velasquez palette uh, now you could replace this uh, burnt sienna with a cadmium warm red. This is another combination I really enjoy using. So slowly over time, by experimenting, you'll learn what works best for you, but there are a few tried and true combinations. I recommend you just go online, check it out, uh, look for primary color combinations recommended, and you can even veer off the primary landscape and go into combinations like just, for example, burnt sienna and French ultramarine that are well known to work well together. Um, or you can just choose whatever two or three colors you want. You can use um, a purple and a green and an orange. You can use like tertiary and um, secondary colors. You can do whatever you want, okay? But for me, I'm, I'm more practical in that sense. I like to minimize my palette and go with uh, tried and true combinations. So that's the first part of this video. And that is how do I even go into the painting knowing what paints I'm gonna use? And many times it's gonna be quite uh, random. So if I if I paint a portrait, I may go for one combination, or I may want to experience with another. I don't have any harsh rules in terms of the um, the colors that I'll be using. Okay. So that's part one. Now the second part is I'm gonna choose. I'm gonna we're gonna use three of these colors, and I'm gonna show you exactly real time how I choose them. Now the combination we're gonna use is phthalo blue, uh, nickel azo yellow, and this kind of an alizarin crimson. Okay. So we have cool. Uh, biased blues and, and reds, and then a, a neutral yellow. I find that combination to work really well for me. We're gonna do a scene of a, a still life, very simple. Uh, so let's get started. Before I start painting this, I just want you to be uh, more familiar with uh, my palette. So here I've got uh, the phthalo blue we'll be using. 
Here we have the uh, nickel azo yellow, a bit contaminated, but I will clean it up. And finally, here we have the uh, alizarin crimson. Okay, so these two are my uh, yellow and, and red. And here we have the phthalo blue. Okay, and you'll see that it's not such a big deal uh, if the pens are a little um, dirty, let's say. Now we have two pairs, and the pairs are uh, green, essentially. So what I want to start with is kind of a green combination. Now to do that, to achieve that, I'll use a bit of um, a bit of blue and a bit of yellow as well. Now the good news is I don't really have to mix them as much, okay? So now you see me mixing on the palette, but I could just go for the pure blue, add some of it right here, and then go straight back into the yellow. Just grab some pure yellow as much as possible. I'm cleaning it. So grab some pure yellow and then add that. And then you can see, uh, this is how I like to do things. I like to use the paints purely. Uh, now, uh, and you can see the, and follow the reference photo. So here it gets a little darker. And where it gets darker, I like to use a bit more uh, blue, okay? Uh, because blue tends to get a little darker than yellow, that's for sure. Uh, and uh, so this is how I like to do it. Now, this is very dark in this area. So I'm gonna go back and put back some even darker paint. Okay, and I'm very aware of my edges. Now here we have a bit of a lighter section. So I'm gonna use a bit of yellow in it as well. Now I do like to use all of my three uh, colors, so I'll probably get to some red here. Now here we have a section that's mid value. It's not too dark, not too light. So I'm gonna add some of my red here uh, and, and place it kind of in the middle, okay? And again, you have to be very aware of your edges and if they're starting to dry. So here we have another area that's a little darker, but not super fully dark. So I'm gonna put that in as well. And right here near the bottom, I'm gonna let these uh, several colors mix together, okay? Now it is important, it's gonna be important to push this area to be much, much darker because it is. And I'm gonna do that using my blue and red together, okay? So some red, some blue because here it's really dark. And the way you create and achieve the interest that you want is by pushing things to be as dark as necessary. Okay, this is really important. So I'm gonna put that in here and we have that slight shadow here. And I'm not being super duper accurate, uh, but just for the demonstration's sake, uh, I'm showing you how I do this. Now I, I wanna do some pure, uh, pure red. So I'm gonna try and pull in uh, some pure red over to uh, this spot right over here. And there's a small highlight that I want to avoid filling up uh, for the time being. And sorry about <laughs> that I talk a little slower than usual just because I'm focusing on what I'm doing. I'm gonna put in the stem. Now it's very important in my opinion and in my approach to merge the washes wherever possible. So I'm actually connecting these two pairs completely. Now, if I wouldn't have demonstrated it, I would have gone even faster, okay? And I would have immediately went over them uh, without even taking a, a short break. But uh, just because of demonstration's sake, I'm slowing down a little bit. I'm gonna put in here some of the, uh, and you see that the colors are really expressive and beautiful and I like when it's like that. Uh, now I wanna blend in some of the highlight so it's not as harsh. Uh, and I can actually uh, exploit some more wet in wet uh, here because it should be a little darker. So I'll go back with some more dark paint. Uh, even here as well, it should be a little darker. All this area near the bottom should be darker. And in fact, all of this area should be slightly darker as well. So I'm gonna go back and do that as well. Uh, and then I'm gonna do some wet and wet here. Later on, we're gonna deal with the rest of the information here. But this is to give you a, 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 some understanding of how I approach the whole color selection uh, dilemma that a lot of people face, okay? So basically, where it's light, I'm going with light colors. Where it's dark, I'm going with darker colors. Um, and sometimes I'll just go by pure instinct. I wouldn't even uh, devote too much thought to the color I'm using, really. Uh, it's just gonna be the, the what I feel like I want to put there. Uh, my one, uh, the one thing that you do have to make sure you're being accurate with is the value. Okay, so as long as your value is accurate, uh, you'll be okay. That's the one thing I won't compromise over at all. Uh, my values have to be on point. 
Okay, now this is a good chance to show you if you need to lighten things up, you can always, I dry the brush on the towel and I can just lift back some of it. And you see, and I just was able to lift back the, the area that was a little too dark, uh, in my opinion. Now, this area is really dark. Now it's up to you how you wanna do these kinds of things because this area is still wet, so you know the paint will move onto the wet area because that's how uh, watercolor works. So it's up to you if you want to take that risk of them uh, merging, uh, or if you want to do that in several. If you want to um, let this sometime, allow this some time to dry, and then go back. This is really uh, some of the process decisions uh, can really be modified. Now this entire area should be much much darker. There's a slight shadow here that I had a feeling will disperse way too much, so I'm picking that back up by drying my brush and coming back. Um, now I picked up a dirt, piece of dirt from the towel. Uh, and this, again, this entire area should be a little darker. So I will darken it up here as well as here. Again, just very gentle uh, touches of, of value. Later on, we're gonna come back and, and make proper differentiation between the two pairs. We're gonna darken things up a little more. Uh, I think this part of the pair could be a little lighter. So I just pulled back some of the paint. Now it's very important, this has a cast shadow that I want to connect while the wash is still fresh, okay? Connect it all the way to this apple. Now this is a very dark apple, as you can see in the reference, and I'm gonna use very pure red in it because I do feel like there isn't enough pure red. Uh, before we get to that, I do want to put in that very gentle shadow right here. Being careful around the areas that already started drying, okay? Um, and I'm gonna continue this one using the same color actually. And I'm just following the value I see and using whatever color that, that I feel like or if, if I try and, and vaguely match it, um, then just at the level of warm and cool. Um, now coming back to the apple on the right, I'm gonna use very thick paint here and, and you can see me mix hopefully because this is a very dark and rich apple. Now you see how I'm minimizing the number of uh, brush strokes that I'm doing. This is really important. Uh, if you can get it done in fewer brush strokes, that's uh, an advantage almost always uh, because it just provides a fresher look, okay? Now there is a highlight here, but the thing is, this thing is so much darker than what I'm doing right now that I, I'm not even worried about that. That's like my initial wash for the apple, okay? And I'm gonna try and dig up some more red. Now it lightens up ever so slightly here, but again, because it's gonna be even darker than that, I'm gonna just keep it uh, that way. The one thing I do wanna make sure I do is blend some of the highlight out, especially near the top, right over here. It shouldn't be as harsh. Um, if you look at the reference carefully, you will notice that it's it's a bit blurry there. Now I wanna clean out my brush even more thoroughly, so I'm using some paper. Um, and I just wanna push that edge a little bit. It seems to have hardened actually, so I can't do much about it. Uh, this paper I'm using uh, was sent to me uh, by a brand called Art uh, XX, I believe, something like that. Uh, it's a, a, a Paul Rubens paper, which I never heard of until I started using it, and it's actually pretty good. I won't say it's is exactly the same level as Arsh or other papers like that, but it is fairly good. Now you have a choice. I can decide that I want to darken the, the apple even more at this stage while it's still wet, and it's not that wet, by the way. It's starting to dry now. Sorry, I moved the camera a bit. Um, uh, but you know what? I'm considering leaving it that way. I'm gonna leave it that way, uh, allow it for some time to uh, dry, and then I'll come back with uh, the additional washes, bring out some deeper uh, shadows, and you see some parts have merged together, that's completely fine, I don't mind that. Uh, the one thing I will put here is this shadow here at the bottom that's fairly dark, and I do wanna get it on this one go. Just drop it gently. And I will allow this a few moments to dry and come back and continue.
Okay, so moving on and most of the wash I think is pretty dry. Uh, what I want to do now is bring out the dark parts. Now, the strategy is very simple in this stage, okay? I'm not doing anything remarkably different. Uh, but what I do want to pay attention to, for example, do you see this border between the two pairs? I'm going to make it a little more clear and obvious by darkening this area and keeping this area light. Okay, what you want to notice is if you don't want to lose the red here, make sure to darken with a red again. Because if I'm going to layer um, blue on top of that, it's probably going to squash out the red and, and it'll just end up looking kind of like this purple. If you want to keep the paint pure, do another glaze of that very same paint, which is exactly what I'm going to do. And I'm actually going to start with this part. Uh, despite, uh, usually I start from left to right, but for some reason here I want to start with this pair. Uh, just because it's a little more detached. Uh, and notice this corner, how dark it is in the reference and uh, how it's important to get that same uh, value or level of darkness. So here's me making the differentiation between the two pairs using red, very pure red uh, and very rich red as well, uh, all the way to the bottom here. Now to start to lighten it up, I'm going to switch back to yellow now and wet it down a little more. Go back here into the yellow all the way to the bottom and there's a bit of a darkness here as well, dark spot. Close this up and now we got a nice little differentiation between the two areas and I'm going to blend the rest of this uh, paint with a, a bit of a drier brush. So you see now I blended it in. Uh, now around the top there is a very dark shadow that I'll get with a pure blue probably. And I'm just placing it in as you can see here. And it connects to the stem. Uh, and the stem is significantly dark as well so I'm just gonna go ahead and darken it up. And now you start to get a sense of the shape, like the actual true shape of the pair. Uh, now, this part is a little darker, so I'm going to go over it, revisit it, but that's about it. I don't want to mess around with it too much. I'm actually going to blend some of this in just so that I have a smoother transition, but that's it. All I wanted to do was to darken it a little bit. Okay, uh, so this pair is pretty much done. And again, we didn't follow it to the T. I did make some changes. I'm just going to lighten this area up as well. Um, but for the most part, I would say it's a pretty good representation of the uh, reference. Now, this part should be a little darker as well. That'll bring out some of the shape of the top part next to the stem. Uh, and we're pretty much done with this. Now, let's go back to this one. Now, as much as we darken this area, it should be a little darker. And I'm going to do the same principle, darken it with blue yet again to keep the, the purity of the paint. Uh, the thing is, when you do the, the, the wash, any wash, uh, it can be very misleading because watercolor dries much lighter than it appears. So you may think that you've gone overboard or that it's too dark and then you may end up needing to patch things up and add a little shadow, more shadows to certain areas, which makes sense. It's perfectly normal. Don't worry about it and just add those shadows in in, the, in a later wash, okay? Uh, so this is a natural course of watercolor painting. Now I'm going to blend that in again, maybe with a little bit of uh, orange perhaps something like this where it gets a little lighter and actually here I want to use some red because this entire area should be a little darker in fact around this edge of the pear like this and I'm gonna blend that in I'm trying to use minimal touches with the brush. Okay, I'm trying to uh, keep things fairly uh, flowing and, and in one go uh, as much as possible because that's, that adds a lot of grace to the painting. Now we, here we have another heavy shadow on the stem and dropping down from the stem around and connecting to the shadow at the bottom. Uh, so that's that. We have a heavy shadow under the pair here. I want to make a little stronger here. This area should still be darker. As much as we darkened it, there's a spot here that's ultra dark. So I got that in uh, and hopefully it reads well. Now the bottom part of the pair should be a little darker as well, but not as much. So I'm going to be very gentle about it. That's too much paint on the brush. So I cleaned off some of that. 
and gut it in like so. Actually, this entire area should be a little darker. Now, around the base of the stem, there's also quite a darker area that you want to get in because that'll help indicate the shape of the base uh, of the stem. Uh, there is a bit of a more darkness towards here, the bottom. So I got that in and hopefully the shape starts to read well. Uh, we do have a bit of a shadow coming through here that helps indicate the shape a little better. That's probably all the work I'm going to do with this one. I think it's pretty much done. Um, there is a bit of, you know what, I'm tempted to try uh, and make the shape even more close to uh, what I see. Because this area should also be a little darker. I'm, I'm missing a mid value. You see, I have a very dark, I have very light, but I'm missing the in between. So I'm trying to get that in right now. I want to get rid of some of the paint from this area. And I'm really just narrating what I'm doing, what my thought process is, and hopefully it helps you better understand. And now I think we really did it. Maybe I'm going to lift back some of that. That's too dark. Uh, where else should I lift? Probably this entire area. And a bit of here. That's also a bit too dark. Um, this part went a little wild, so I'm gonna just dab it out, and here we go, perfect shape, I'm not gonna touch that anymore. Um, so next up, uh, we have another sharp shadow that I missed from earlier, and it's just under this pair over here. And you see, I'm not obsessed with getting everything to be perfectly accurate because the overall impression is going to be good and that's all I care about. Uh, however, I just mentioned that and this part should be a little more accurate. That's an important part for me, at least in my mind. So because it connects to this larger shadow. So I do want to get that to be fairly accurate. And that's good, I think. Messed it up a little again. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to redo this area. Once more, just darker where it comes under that shadow. And now we're good to go. Now this apple, I did it, the, the initial wash, knowing that it's gonna be much, much darker. Okay, this one needs extreme darkening. So I'm mixing up some very thick paint here. Very, very thick paint. And, and I'm just gonna start glazing it over the previous layer. And it's also red, because I wanna keep that uh, impression of red on the apple that I'm currently that I currently have but the thing is I want to negative paint around the areas that are slightly lighter so that's one now the second one is kind of like that and just being very gentle here not to lose the shape and coming back and continuing with this spot. Now the, this paper, again, it's not the best, so I do feel like some of the paint stays on the top, on its surface. Um, so I, I'm gonna have to be careful uh, with that, just so that I don't reawaken previous layers too much or anything like that. And I also see that my camera is starting to run out of space, so I'll probably pause the recording uh, after finishing this uh, and make sure that I erase some stuff, but in any case, you get the picture. Now notice how much darker it is and how much better it looks now. It has this shiny quality. I'm just gonna blend the top part here. And to do that, you really have to clean your brush. Uh, and I'm gonna blend that. And maybe using a bit of a wetter uh, paint just to blend that edge in, okay? Blending is a bit challenging uh, to me right now. Maybe it's the paper, maybe it's just me. Uh, but in any case, blend that in. And also, I wanna close off this gap right over here, okay? I'm gonna pause the recording, let this dry for a bit, and then we're gonna add the some final touches. Okay, so we are almost done here. The one thing that I forgot was funny enough, uh, the well I didn't forget it I the the bottom part should be a little darker just to place this in some kind of a setting on a tabletop uh, but there's also a shadow here so I think what I'll do uh, is first go over the table and I'm gonna use a relatively uh, cool color to do that because I have a lot of warms here with the the different uh, components and I want to make sure that I get some coolness in there as well but it has to be pretty light because I don't want it to be too dominant I'm gonna also paint it really quickly so that I don't reawaken any of the paint already on the paper, okay? You have to be careful with 
um, inferior types of paper and also and not that this one's inferior but also I didn't allow it a few hours to dry so it's not 100% dry it's kind of uh, I've been drying for like 10 minutes which is fine uh, so I'm gonna go over all of this very very lightly not playing around with it too much uh, this paper actually uh, really impressed me so far I have to say covering everything up here and I'm enjoying doing these uh, studies on it and still life and all of those good stuff and now you can at least feel like these are on some kind of a surface now I'm gonna strain those lines because I did a bit of a terrible job here like so like this so we're done with this part and I could actually put that shadow already here wet and wet so it goes around this area and I think this is what I'll do I'll just put it in wet and wet and let it dry and that'll be our final result like this so I think I'm gonna have to lift back that was a mistake that was a mistake <laughs> that happens too uh, it doesn't really matter it's not a focus here focus is all the rest of the the fruit and the still life setting itself but in any case I think this is now good I just wanted to adjust some of that left edge I'm gonna let it dry now and then uh, say a few words and we'll we're gonna wrap up this process Okay, so here we go, final result. I really hope you enjoyed this one. I'm gonna hold it up a little up close so you can uh, better see. And I'm gonna keep this one simple. You could go back and work on the very small nuances of how the stem is darker at the bottom, uh, lighter at the top, but this works really well for me in my opinion. I wouldn't change too much. I love how the shadows here kind of resemble of reflections. I love the final look uh, in general. Uh, I also like how the I just love cold pressed paper and the way the texture shows even though I haven't made haven't made any use of it uh, so notice how sometimes by the way how dark you have to go in order to get a good final result and a lot of people I know are afraid of pushing their values but notice how dark I should have gone here I had to go here to get this result this is almost a, a black red but it is still uh, pretty much a red as you can see up close it's still a little wet still drying but mostly it's dry um, so yeah so this is it and now we can wrap up this video I hope you found this helpful so here's the final result of this endeavor. I hope you enjoyed this and I hope you learned something new. Uh, seeing me uh, narrating in real time why I choose a certain color scheme or selection or why I go with a blue or with a red or with a yellow. Um, these are many times decisions that are made on the fly subconsciously. I don't have to think about them. Uh, I just, if something reads to me as warm I'll use warm if something reads to me as cool I'll use cool sometimes I'll use warm shadows sometimes I'll use cool shadows so it's not uh, a very uh, harsh set in stone rule okay it will depend on the reference as well sometimes I throw all of that out the window and just paint based on values but to me as long as the drawing is accurate and the values are accurate the colors really are secondary uh, but they can have an impact uh, which is why I wanted to do this video okay so just to conclude um, figure out what color mixes, combos, and, and schemes you enjoy. Do some research online, experiment with a few paints. You can find everything online so you don't have to experience and waste money on paints you don't need later on. Uh, so do your research, figure out what you want to paint with for a specific painting, and then uh, practice doing this. Let go of any worries about using the perfect color and where, or imitating the color perfectly. Don't worry about any of that and try to channel what you feel about the reference, okay? If, now, if you do want to be very realistic and go for realistic colors, I'm not going to stop you. Enjoy it that's, that's, if that's what you enjoy, okay? I just don't want you to be uh, held back by fear. So this is basically everything I wanted to talk about today. There was one thing that I forgot, but I may remember um, later on. Oh, yeah. I just wanted to say that the more you explore certain combinations, you find more and more things that work with them. So for example, the French ultramarine and ochre kind of combination, uh, I discovered that yellow ochre works really well with phthalo green and you wouldn't think that phthalo green would work with French ultramarine because it's phthalo, it's a bit cooler and more synthetic looking, uh, artificial looking green, but they do work uh, funny enough in that context. So the more you explore these combinations, the more you can reach out and find more and more things that work. Okay, so I really hope you enjoyed this video. I actually plan on uh, creating a few courses 
for um, specifically on watercolor painting on my own platform, on my own website, but right now I don't have any. But if you do uh, want to learn how to draw accurately, be sure to check out my beginner's drawing course, link in the description box below. As always, I do have on Udemy several painting courses. Um, you can just look for my name there, I think you'll find them. Um, and this is it. Thank you so much. I really appreciate you listening and I'm starting to find that fire again for making uh, certain types of videos um, and in more real time, real time narrated. Uh, I really uh, am starting to enjoy, enjoy these. Okay, so I would be very happy for your feedback. Let me know in the comment below if you enjoyed this video, if you have anything you want to improve, if there's anything you want me to dive deeper on and talk more about, any specific color combinations you want me to explore, I'll be happy to accommodate whatever you want. So thank you so much and I will see you again in another vid real soon.